Hello everyone, I'm here with Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey today in my Game Grid Toy Box for my next episode of Toy Box Tutorials. We've been working on a pinball game, and so far we've looked at the Super Cannon, which we're using to launch the ball into the game, and we've looked at the various pinball toys. And last time we hooked up an action button to the flippers so that when you push the button, the flippers will be triggered. And I pointed out that there's a noticeable delay sometimes between the time you press the button on your controller and when Mickey actually presses the action button. We need a better way to control the flippers, so today we're going to begin looking at the remote controller. You can find this toy in the Creativa Toys drawer, and I'm going to drop one right over here. The remote controller can be used to change the player's controls. It'll temporarily remove your character from the game and allow you to control other toys instead. Now, I can cover the basic functions of this toy in one episode, and I'm going to do that. But I think people struggle with how to use this toy, so I'm going to be revisiting this toy in the coming weeks, and I'm going to show you plenty of examples of what you can do with this toy, so you can see just how powerful it is. You can do a lot more with it than just building pinball games. But let's start by taking a look at the logic menu for this. First thing you'll notice is there are no properties, but we do have some logic connections. So let me open that. And the logic connections, the trigger signals that this will broadcast, are divided up by player. So if you're concerned about player one or player two or you want to to apply to all players, um, you can pick whichever one you want. And let's just focus on player one for a while. I'm not going to deal with two players um, anytime soon here, but we'll keep it simple. So if we look at just player one, there's a whole list of trigger signals that this will broadcast regarding how player one is interacting with this toy. The first one that we have is control mode activated. This is broadcast when the remote controller is activated by player one, in this case. And then we have likewise control mode deactivated. This is when um, the player leaves the remote controller and the control returns back to the character that they were originally controlling. And then we have a whole bunch of button presses here. And this is gonna differ depending on what platform you're on, what console you're on. Um, for my Wii U, I have a set of buttons that are laid out in a diamond formation. So B on my controller is on the bottom, A is on the right, Y is on the left, X is on the top. We also have L, which is on the back side of the controller, and ZL, which is a trigger on the back side of the controller, on the left. And then on the right, we have R and ZR. And that's all we have. So this will let you control any of those buttons, but not all of the controls on your game controller. So the directional sticks, um, the D-pad, the plus and minus buttons, um, the home button, none of these are controllable by this toy. So you don't have full control over your game controller, but you can map certain buttons to certain functions with a logic connection. And if you look at player two, they have all the same things. So you can have this toy do different things if it's player one interacting with it versus player two. And likewise, you can have things that will apply to any player. It doesn't matter which player pushes the A button. Maybe if either of them do it, it'll do the same thing. All right. Now there's also a behavior associated with this, and for right now we'll use this button to demo that. Um, I'm going to be deleting these buttons here shortly, so it doesn't really matter. So on the button we'll do a new logic connection when pressed. And we'll come over to the remote controller and you'll see the logic menus available in the lower right. We'll open that. And once again it's divided up by player. So you can do this and have it apply just to player one, or just to player two or to all players. If we select player one, the one behavior that's associated with this toy is force exit. So when the player is done with this toy, or the game is done with this toy, um, 
you can force the player to exit out of the remote controller. If the player does it, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment, um, there's a button on their controller that they just press that will take them out of the remote controller mode and restore control of their character back to them. Um, you can also set up a logic connection to do this for them, which is what this is. So when a game is over, like our pinball game, we can force them out of the remote controller and back into the regular game. All right, so that's the remote controller and let's just do a very quick demo of it by itself. So on the remote controller, I'll do a new logic connection for player one. When Y is pressed, and this is the leftmost button in the diamond formation on the right, I will push uh, that. So when Y is pressed, we'll trigger this flipper. And we'll do the same for the other left flipper. Oops. So for player one, <coughs> when they press the Y button, <coughs> excuse me, we'll flip that flipper. <coughs> hmm. Excuse me. New logic connection for player one. When A is pressed, and this is the right hand button on that diamond formation. We'll flip this one. And we'll also flip the other one. Okay. And now I'll show you how that works. So just like any of the other input toys, like the button or the trigger or a trigger area, when you walk up to the toy, and in this case you step on it, you have the option to use this. And if I press Y, actually let me cancel out of that here. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment, but I want to get it in a position where I can see the field here. Okay, so we step on, we press Y. You'll see it took Mickey out of the game, and now most of the buttons on my controller aren't doing anything. The only buttons that are going to do anything are the two that I mapped, which are the Y and the A. So if I press A on my controller, that flips those two flippers. If I press Y, that flips these two flippers. And so that's all I can really do. And so this toy has let me take control of those flippers directly. <laughs> now you can hear Mickey is still there and he's doing his little magic thing as if he were still in the game as you can see but he's he's not able to be controlled and the game has just kind of removed him and replaced him with that spark to indicate that he's not there for me to control. He's still there but I can't control him. So to get out of this um, you press minus on my controller and there we go. And if I step on and press Y, it puts me back in there. Now, normally there's a little message that pops up every once in a while that tells me to press minus on my key, on my uh, controller to get out of this. And I don't know why that's not showing up. It normally is. So um, that's kind of weird. But uh, anyway, that's the uh, remote controller. So now we know what now that we know what this toy can do, let's put it to use in our pinball game. And at this point, we're going to build the rest of the logic for a basic pinball game so that when we're done today, it'll be fully playable. It will not have all of the features yet, but you can play it all the way through. So let's start by taking these buttons out. And the first thing I want to do is put in a decent camera because <laughs> standing on that remote controller or even pushing that button that we added last time is not going to allow us to see the board in a way that we need to. So I'm going to come up to the basic blocks drawer and we're going to start with this long block and I'm just going to show you where to place the camera and I'm going to use these blocks to do it. So I've centered it on the field there as you see. We'll place another block here. And let me pull up my screen grab here to make sure I got this and we'll place one more right here and another one on top, and then we're going to do three. So one, two, three. 
And that's where we're going to place our camera. So we'll go back to the Creativa Toys drawer, grab the target camera, we're going to put that right on top of those blocks. And then I'm going to drop a locator for it to look at. And I'm going to put the locator right here in front of that first bumper. All right. I'm also going to put another locator right on top of this because the game is going to start when we step on a challenge maker. And uh, we're going to have to move the player over here. And the little blue dot on the locator, it's kind of hard to see, but it's facing the way I want. It's facing that direction. So that's good. Now that we've placed the camera, we can take these blocks out. And we'll place the rest of our toys. We've already done a lot of these, so we don't have to place too many more. We've already got our weather vane out there that we added last time. We have our racing gate, which is down there. We added that last time. We're going to need a challenge maker. So we'll drop this down right here. We already have the falling object generator over there. So we're good with that. We'll keep going to the right in the drawer here. And I am looking for uh, a scoreboard. We're going to need that. We're also going to need a counter. I'll place that over here. Um, just looking at my notes. We have the remote controller already. We need a few logic gates. So I'm going to place one over here next to the uh, falling object generator. I'm going to put another one over here, a little closer to the challenge maker. And uh, we'll place another one over here next to the scoreboard. And we'll put that here. Okay, and that is everything that we're going to need. <clears throat> so this logic gate over here is going to control the falling object generator. All right. This one is going to be for the end of the game. And this one is going to be to help us initialize the scoreboard. So let's start with the scoreboard. So we'll look at the properties for this. I'm going to set the play to value to the maximum possible, which is 9999. And the rest of the properties are fine. For the counter, this is going to keep track of the number of balls. So we're going to give the player three balls. And when the uh, count drops to zero, the game will be over. So for our target count, we want three balls. So I'm going to set this to four. You have to add one more to the count than the number of balls that you want. The target reset count, we're going to set that to four as well. Visible display is off. We do not need that. Uh, yeah, we'll leave it on. That's the one we'll leave off. All right. And then for the challenge maker, all of the properties on this, the defaults are fine. Nothing we need to change there. Um, there is a property on the racing gate. And that's off. That's the way I want it. Okay. All right. So then to hook up our pinball game, this is what we're going to do. Let's start with the scoreboard. So on the challenge maker, a new logic connection. On invites accepted, we're going to reset the scoreboard. On the, on the challenge maker, a new logic connection. When the game is started, we'll come over to our scoreboard and activate it. On the challenge maker, a new logic connection. When the game is ended, and there's two things I want to do when this happens. First one I want to do is come over here and remove it from the display. 
And the second thing I want to do is deactivate it. But again, I can't connect up a second one of those game ended signals to this toy. That's why we have the logic gate. So we'll input into that instead. Oops. And on the logic gate, a new logic connection on output. We'll come over to the scoreboard and deactivate it. And then the last thing we want to do is link the score results for the end so we can show the player the final score. All right. And then the scoring is going to happen as the ball hits these bumpers and bouncers. All right. So on the bouncers, all those bouncers are connected to this logic gate. And we hooked it up to play a sound because our camera is going to be way up there and you're not going to be able to hear it, uh, the sound that's built into this. And so we're going to play a sound, but we'll also do the scoring through this logic gate. So when any one of those bouncers is hit by the ball, it'll come through this logic gate. And on the logic gate, we'll do a new logic connection on output. We'll go over to the scoreboard and we will increment by one the score for player one. On the other one, the other logic gate over here is connected up to the bumpers. Again, we did that last time. So on that one, we'll do a new logic connection on output. Come over to the scoreboard and we will increment the player's score. Oops, not by one. We'll do this one, well, let's do it by five for player one. Two might be a little safer, but I suck at this, so I'll do five. <laughs> All right, and that is it for the scoreboard. Next thing is the counter, which is the number of balls. So on the challenge maker, a new logic connection. On invites accepted, we'll come over to the counter and reset the counter. That'll set the target count to four. All right. And then, uh, just trying to think of the order I want to do this. I think we'll just leave it at that for right now. Yeah. Okay. And then on the challenge maker, the other thing we want to do, when the ball comes through here, and it passes through this trigger area, it turns on the weather vane. Um, and if the player decides to abort the game before the ball has a chance to run through the whole gauntlet, it'll never reach this racing gate. And so the racing gate's what turns off that weather vane. So we want to add a logic connection here to make sure that weather vane gets turned off. So a new logic connection. When the game is ended, we want to make sure this gets turned off. So whether the player aborted the game or it finished properly, either way, that weather vane will be off. So it won't cause a problem for any of the other games we're going to build later. All right, on the challenge maker, Another thing I want to do is new logic connection when the game is ended. I want to make sure we take all of the balls out. So we'll come up here to the falling object generator and remove all. Okay. And I think that's it for the challenge maker for now. There's a couple more things I want to do, but I want to kind of do this in order so you understand what's happening. Okay, um, on the challenge maker, let's do a new locator connection. And we're going to connect up to this locator that we placed on top of the remote controller. That'll be player one's start location. So when the player steps on the challenge maker and starts the challenge, we'll automatically put them over here so they can activate that thing right away. And then once they activate this, we want to turn on our camera. So on the remote controller, we're going to do a new logic connection 
for player one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, when the control mode is activated, we're going to come up to our target camera and we're going to activate the camera. Which means when the game is over, we need to turn that off. So on the challenge maker, a new logic connection. When the game is ended, we will deactivate that camera. And let's go ahead and set the camera properties. So on the camera, we'll leave that set, that, most of these will leave the way they are. I'm going to turn off glow through and we're going to set the camera target to the connected locator which I'm going to connect in a moment and all the rest of these properties are fine. So then on the target camera we'll do a new locator connection and we're going to have it looking right at this locator right before that first bumper. <laughs> if I can select it, there we go. That's where the camera will look. All right. Now when the player starts the remote controller, I want to give them a way to drop the ball. And so I could hook this directly up to the falling object generator and map that to a button on the controller. The problem though is I don't want the player just press pressing that button repeatedly and dropping all three balls and ending the game. <laughs> so I want to control that somewhat. And that is why we have the logic gate over here. Okay, So we're going to pass that through here and we're going to use the logic gate to prevent the player from dropping balls when we don't want them to. And that's the purpose of that. So on the challenge maker we'll start with that. Um, I think that's the best way to do this, yeah. So on the challenge maker, we'll do a new logic connection on invites accepted. We're going to come over to this logic gate and open it so that it's available for the player to drop their first ball. And also on new logic connection on game ended, we want to make sure that just gets closed because there's nothing to prevent the player from when the game is over just walking over here and stepping on this and starting to push buttons. So we want to make sure this is only applicable when the game is actually going. All right. So once that's open, the logic gate is open and the player is on here and they activate this, then we're going to map a button to allow them to drop a ball. And I'm going to use the X button, which is the uppermost button on the diamond formation. So on the remote controller, we'll do a new logic connection. For player one, when X is pressed, we're going to input into this logic gate. And on output from the logic gate, we will go up to our falling object generator and generate the bowling ball. So that signal will only reach the falling object generator if this gate is open. Now as soon as that ball has been generated, we want to close that gate so the player can't drop a second ball and mess this up. So on the falling object generator, we'll do a new logic connection. When the ball is generated, come down to our logic gate and close it. So now the ball is going into the field. The player can't press the X button again to drop a second ball. But we want them to be able to drop a ball when the ball comes through here and goes into the racing gate and is basically destroyed. So on the racing gate, we've already set up some connections here from last time. Uh, we're turning off the weather vane and we're going to the falling object generator to remove the ball so that it's not sitting down here in the back of this uh, playing field. So the next thing we want the racing gate to do is a new logic connection. When crossed always on, 
So whenever the ball crosses through here, we'll come over to our logic gate and open it again. And that means the player can press the X button to launch their next ball. And when they do, this will drop the ball. That'll turn around and close the gate again. Okay? So hopefully that's easy to follow. And the other thing we want to do is when the ball is dropped, we need to decrement our counter over here. And I think the best way to do that is on output from this gate. So on the gate, we'll do a new logic connection on output. We'll come over here and decrement the counter by one. All right, so every time we do that, every time we uh, drop a new ball and it goes through the counter, or th through the logic gate there, it'll decrement the counter, okay? And then on the counter, we'll do a new logic connection. When zero is reached, we're going to input into this logic gate. And this logic gate is going to control the end of the game. And actually that should not have inputted. Uh, that should actually open the gate, sorry. Let me edit that. When zero is reached, we're going to open that gate. All right, so that means on the challenge maker, we're gonna do a new logic connection on invites accepted. I wanna close this gate initially, and we'll also close it when the game is over too. So this game, this gate is going to be closed initially. We're only gonna open it when the counter reaches zero. And I'm double checking my notes just to make sure. Okay. So on the racing, around the, yeah, the racing gate, when the ball crosses through here, we're gonna do a new logic connection. When crossed always on, we're gonna attempt to input into this gate. And initially this gate is closed so nothing will happen. The game will not end. Um, so it's not actually going to end until this hits zero. Okay, and this is just opening the gate. And actually, let me come back in here to the properties because I think this needs to be, oops, that's set to five. That's weird. We'll set this to, Target count three. I think this is the way this should be. Well, it won't matter. Okay, the target reset count should be three. Sorry, this doesn't actually matter because as soon as we start the challenge and uh, we begin it, it's going to reset the counter, which is gonna put this at three. So that's actually fine. Target count doesn't matter. It's the start reset count. All right, so the ball passes through here. It will attempt to end the game by passing through this logic gate, which will be closed. This will only be open after the last ball goes through. So when that last ball passes through the racing gate, it'll attempt to come through here like it always does, and this time the gate will be open. So now we can end the game. And what this logic gate will do is a new logic connection on output will come to the challenge maker and complete the game. So that's how we end the game. All right, easy peasy. Okay, so we've hooked up the weather vane everywhere. We've hooked up the target camera everywhere, the scoreboard, the counter. I've covered this logic gate. That's all done. We've covered this logic gate. This is all done. I'm 
just kind of reviewing my notes here. And this is going to the counter, right? Yes, it is. I did make that connection. Good. Okay, I think we are just about ready here. So let's go ahead and play some pinball. All right, so we'll step on the challenge maker. Start the challenge. There's our th three balls. We will use the remote controller and now we are in the camera mode. I press X to drop the ball. There goes the ball. The counter went down to two. Now the scoreboard is up and there goes the ball. And here we go. <laughs> All right, I'm using the remote controller, the buttons on my controller here to control that ball. Whoa! <laughs> Now, one of the things you'll notice is the ball can get stuck in that little groove. So you just have to kind of work it with the, the buttons here. Try to get it out of that. Ah. <laughs> That's one of the downsides of this. Yeah, almost. And we could potentially move that flipper a little bit to make sure that doesn't happen. But, uh, yeah. There it goes. And let's go ahead and just let this one go through the end and see what happens to test our logic out. So that drops through the end. So the ball is gone. And now I should be able to press X on my controller again to drop a fresh ball. And there it goes. The count has gone down to one. So our next ball is out in the field. And you'll notice the uh, um, message that comes across every once in a while from the camera there. Okay, so that takes us down. We have one ball left, so I should be able to press X again. And now that logic gate should be open. So when this comes through, um, comes through the flippers, which I'll let it go through there again, that should end the game. And there we go. And already I see one thing I forgot. <laughs> All right. So Mickey was kind of automatically taken out of that when the challenge ended, but it would be good to do that explicitly. So on the challenge maker, we'll do a new logic connection. When the game is ended, let's force Mickey out of that. So we'll go player one, force exit. And that way Mickey will be there right at the end when we show the results and not just when the the uh, score results are closed. So that's the remote controller and that's how you can use it to build a pinball game. Next time we're going to examine another toy that will allow us to get rid of that annoying camera message that blocks our view. Until then I want to thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed my video today. If so please hit the like button and leave a comment before you go. You can also subscribe to my channel by clicking my photo in the lower right corner of this video if you haven't done that already. Have a great weekend!